Welcome to Dead Air Live. Did you know that was the name of the show? I had no idea. Yes, whatever that means. But you, I loved in the green room how you warmed us up. Could you share that with our audience and me now? Absolutely. I would love to welcome everyone. I know there are some friends in Portugal and New Zealand who are watching. And special, special thank you to them for staying up late. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll breathe for a few moments. And your eyes can be open or closed. And I like looking at you. I like looking at you too. <laughs> Maybe we'll look at each other. I thought the whole show could be that, but you vetoed that. <laughs> it might be an, an improvement over what we say. Words I'm are, trying. I'm learning. Yes. <laughs> so we take a breath. And we just feel. Wow. And we take another breath. And I feel a little bit anxious. I'm a human being after all. Oh. And I feel excited. Mm. I love being on camera. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> and another breath. I invite both of us to be with each other and the audience in this moment. And I would love to bring the intention in. The first intention is what we have already been doing together, right in this moment, is to feel. Wow. I'm learning from you to feel every moment. Some of the feelings are not very pleasant. Mm, sometimes. It was so much easier before you introduced us to just be in my head. <laughs> <laughs> and the second intention is to, um, to talk about love. Just to talk about it. Wow. Oh, we'll see, play with it and see what happens. Well, we had, there's a lot of love between us, I think. Absolutely. So maybe we can just be with it. We can do that. See what, it, <laughs> see what happens. And I mean, this is a, this is a kids-friendly show. Don't worry. <laughs> mm. and, the, and the third intention is, what was the third intention? Do you remember? I do remember the yes, third intention. Yes, be yourself. Be or be myself. Be, me, be myself. Yes. They're all, the, actually, this discussion about love sounds easy. They were all very hard. Yes. These are hard intentions. But we don't have to make them difficult. So we can just see where this takes us. Well, the feeling one I like. Okay. Because I'm not so aware. But thanks to you, um, there's a different feeling every moment. Hmm. Not all pleasant. I had a feeling bypass. Let's think about feelings. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh. it's very popular now to talk about emotional intelligence. Yes. Um, and it is interesting. It's something that we're born with as children. We know how to feel before we know how to think. Oh, yes. Because children, I remember talking about emotions to my students at the university. And there was a baby who was looking at a mother who was singing a song to it. And the baby had eyes wide open and all the emotions you could see in baby's eyes. Oh my. So the baby didn't know necessarily the words, but it knew that the song was about love. And the mother was beautifully singing to the baby and the baby was crying at first and then laughing and it was this full expression of emotions on baby's face oh my so we know it so we can find that again maybe and then we forget oh <laughs> and then we can remember maybe thanks to so i love what you said at the beginning to have a feeling and did you say breathe into it or breathe with it I was using breath to just become aware of the feeling. So I have a feeling which I have now, and then my, and my breath just helps me be aware of it. Because you stop your head from thinking. Oh, do you want to tell people <laughs> how you handled 
<laughs> your breakup from the man you most loved in your life, if you'd like to share that. Um, I think it taught me so much. Tell them what tell our audience what you did. I'm gonna okay, I w- it's a little bit vulnerable, but I will share. Yes. So I was uh, going through a separation from a person that I really loved so much. And I knew that I needed to heal. And I had so much pain about the separation. And, and whenever I was thinking about it, it was as sharp knives going through my head. And any thought, it would be almost either self-destructive thought or I was trying to figure things out. And by self-destructive, you mean? Um, by self-destructive, maybe trying to figure out whether something is right or wrong or I- whether I'm right or wrong. Oh, do you mean to be a part? Yeah. And that was, well, why is that self-destructive? I think because once you make a decision, you have to just let go and stick with it because the mind just goes into this logical dilemma of, is this right, is it not right? Yes, and how do you know? Well, you have to trust. <laughs> trust that you made the right decision? Yes. Can't you, but people get back together after they get a Well, you can make the decision for the moment, right? You don't know what happens in the future, but at mm. the moment, this is what you deal with. But back to the feeling, and I gave myself a week to just feel, and I told myself I will not think a single thought. Wow. <laughs> so, and I, the, I, it was a very interesting experience because there was so much pain, and I said to myself, I'm allowed to feel anything that I feel. I can feel as much pain as I am feeling in the moment, yes. but I cannot think. Oh my, <laughs> thank you, that's a gift though. I, I'm always thinking about what I can do to help, and help Yeah, my And you know what I was doing? As soon as I would start thinking, I would just go to sleep. I said, okay, you're beginning to think. Take go, a nap. Take no. a nap. Oh my, <laughs> this is a great gift if people have the, the week to do this. Mm-hmm. Yes. Or they can do it in little amounts of time. Sure. Maybe... maybe 10 minutes? Absolutely. Why? And what I notice uh, through work with my clients, because I'm a healer and I'm a coach, a life coach, is when we're able to heal and when we're able to feel, we're able to heal much faster. Because the time that people say time heals, but I would say feeling heals. Mm. When you're able to feel it's almost as this energy is not being stuck. We're not resisting whatever is happening. And really, it, it's not only applied to separation, but any sort of change. Change is very difficult for most people. We're very good with habits. We're very good with routines and uh, going along with things that are familiar to us. But in order to evolve and progress, we need to change all the time. And there is... Uh, <laughs> In business world, even, there is the concept of adaptability intelligence, which is how quickly we're able to adapt to evolution and change. And interestingly, people who are more adaptable to change, also people who are more emotionally intelligent, because they're able to feel and they're not afraid of feeling. Wow. So if you're not emotionally intelligent, we can learn by your, this particular technique? Absolutely. Just I believe everybody can feel. And and stop thinking. Boy, I could do that now. You can do the talking. I will, <laughs> <laughs> I will do the feeling. I have a feeling. <laughs> I have a feeling right now that it's time for maybe sing one of your poems because I feel when we are listening to music, it opens us. Oh, but our feelings. It what opens feel? our feelings. Oh, and I maybe I'll see what I feel about it rather than what I think about it. Exactly. So you, would you like to sing one? I would love to, but you have to give me an idea which one. Oh, let's see now. Maybe we sing together. Oh, I would try that in the green room, and I discovered <laughs> I had this feeling, which was true, that if you sang it yourself, it had a special, you know, that feeling of wow, mm. and I didn't feel. So I would like you to... Maybe since we did this, okay. Um, this is a song I wrote for my beloved first wife hmm. um, after we parted, 
and I still feel love for her and she lets me talk to her once a year. I call her every birthday. Mm. And we have an hour or an hour and a half conversation, which feels very freeing. That's beautiful. Mm. Airborne. <coughs> so can I sing it to you? Yes. Okay. Airborne. I am here with you now you are here with me now i am you and you are me and when that's true we both that all nights bring our morns and we die to be born loving you who love me being true we are free well thank you i feel like crying and happy so i'm noticing my feelings now thanks to you like what do you i can breathe, breathe. i did my job <laughs> yes uh, and what do i breathe I'm a newbie with these feelings. <laughs> I breathe into them, with them. Well, I love the way you describe the story that happened to you last night and oh how my. you were able to feel. And that story really touched me. Oh, oh. Uh, the way you were on a bicycle and tell the story. <laughs> well... Oh, it's different telling it on camera <laughs> than telling it to you again, but mm. I, I will try to feel it as if it's happening. Okay. So I'm going to visit um, a group that reads James Joyce's Ulysses mm -hmm. that I've been to many times, but haven't for a while. And I'm just discovering, with p help from people like you, to open my heart mm. and have that and not you know, meet you with my mind. <laughs> yes. And so I'm looking forward to, I'm biking there, it's a two mile bike ride. And I'm looking forward to, oh, what would it be like to see these people I've seen, you know, for years, but with a more open heart. Mm. And I get to the restaurant, the Corb, and I'm extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to be comfortable. <laughs> I was so looking forward to feeling love for all the people. <laughs> and I'm sitting beside two lovely women, one married, one single, and feeling squished and not at all feeling open-hearted mm -hmm. or enjoying being there. And since I wanted to enjoy being there, it was a little... I started a war already. <laughs> already I was fighting off. <laughs> And I didn't do anything. Mm. I just stayed in that place. And when I started reading this book I love, my mind tried to understand it. And my heart didn't like that either. Hey, you're not paying attention to me. I'm not happy. And you're trying to understand the book. What is wrong? So it's a real. <sighs> Everyone else is having a good time. <laughs> <sighs> and I... At the end, when people get up, I feel better and talk to someone. I help heal her foot. She had, had wish she was on crutches. I have a feeling that um, many people, and I don't know if that's the feeling that you were experiencing yesterday, but I imagine many people feeling anxious, um, and they may in social situations. So it's easy for many people to feel love when they're alone, 
when they're by themselves and some people have beautiful meditation moments and wonderful experiences when they understand the nature of God and often they experience those moments she alone. She just throws out, <laughs> just throws out, we're having a nice Somerville cable <laughs> access television show and just throws out. And when they understand the nature of God, then what? Where are we now? What well, does that mean? We're still on the same topic of love. <laughs> what is the understanding the nature of God? It's hard enough to <laughs> get God to feel God, which would be very nice. Right. But it's, you know, it's w very interesting to know that people have those moments in solitude for the most part. Uh, but it, it's, I think, whether it's social anxiety or the habitual way of closing, because you talked about your heart opening, yes. and you were going to this beautiful event with an intention to love people. Yes. And you had your And have a good time. And I have thought. a good time. Yes. And you were so open to the experience and then here you find yourself amongst two women plus some yes <laughs> yes two lovely women <laughs> two lovely that women. i really like <laughs> but uh, oh crushed in between <laughs> so i wonder i will pose both of us a question how do you remain in the space of love when you are with others well, I'm going to finish, keep going on the story and interrupt me again. So I feel a little better when it's over and of I course. wanted <laughs> it to be over. And then I could stand up. Let's see how this works. Well, oh, I, I don't think you can stand up. No, I, I, tra I tra trapped myself. <laughs> see, that's what happens. I trapped myself. That's what that's, happened yesterday, was, too. Yes, yesterday. So at the end, when it's over, I'm standing up and talking to someone on crutches. And then I, I do, this is someone I've known for years, and I do feel more love for her. Aww. And that was very nice. And we hugged goodbye three times. Just that we, just we talked and said goodbye, talked. And then I'm, st I'm biking home, and I hear, I'm lost, I'm lost, I'm hmm. lost. I know how to get home. And my, it's a mantra that just goes on my mind. And I didn't particularly want it, but I've learned it. I, Say it, I'm lost, I'm lost, I'm lost. I go to sleep feeling lost. I get up in the morning and I have what I call a self-attack. Okay. Bam! I have a Zen master inside. Bam! <laughs> Bam! Knocking down walls, really. Bam! And only about an hour into this, help me, oh Lord, I can finally feel some it really felt like jesus christ energy coming through my heart uh, talking about god yes. <laughs> i broke the ice it felt and it felt like it was <laughs> it felt like i was holding this supposed love that i was mm. opening my heart and holding it i i love i'm feeling rather than letting it out sure and then i feel happy because i was scared i was going to be with you in television and feeling <laughs> Wow, and you don't know that part of me because I'm usually happy when I'm with you. But That's true. But I tell you about it at least warning, giving you a Surgeon General's warning. So I, I'm going to bring both of us to the question of how we can keep our hearts open when we are with other people. I tell this story that I just told you to my downstairs neighbor. And he says, when you're feeling squished in between these two women brilliant i didn't think <laughs> of it there's a chair over there i could go and sit in the there's a single chair at the edge of the table and that might have helped a lot mm. and it was connected to letting this energy out of my heart i can let myself move we just did that before the show we're i sitting, like that we were sitting in this small cold room you and i and I was feeling a little after about an hour. And I said, brilliant. It was after studying how to be a human being for, for over 50, 60 years. I so said, I'm, I'm going to interject here. <laughs> I said, <And> let's, <laughs> let's go I'm outside. Going to use my tool. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I have a She's got the tool. power. <laughs> she has I got the, the power. power. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
was given, I was empowered be, uh, prior to the show, so I'm using my power yeah. right away. So what I'm going to extract from you is a useful, a useful tip is that if it's too much, right? If the feeling is too much, you can give yourself a little bit more space because yes. so that your sympathetic nervous system has a chance to cool down. Thank you. <laughs> you see, making, this is not just <laughs> chatter. We're grounding this in science. Exactly. This is, so in I case you to, doubted, I'm going to, I'm going this is a very again. scientific <laughs> show. So I'm going to say that and just give a little bit of an explanation because you I think you gave one of those examples where many people feel that they're extremely open in their heart and um but in the presence of others um what interestingly happens is that there is really self-judgment that kicks in because we are social beings and we immensely are interested in how other people perceive us how they evaluate us, if they like us or if they don't like us. Well, you're kind. I didn't really care. <laughs> I didn't, except one of my friends was, no, I didn't care that much. I was caring more how horrible I was. See, you're a thoughtful, <laughs> considerate social, because you were brought up in Russia, communism. Yes. Of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there was immense amount of unconditional love during that time. <laughs> yes. I, uh, <laughs> but I think that it's important for people to understand why this happens. Because we we really we're so connected to each other, and we feel when another person rejects us, even on a subtle level. And maybe it's not an an obvious rejection, but it's a subtle with withdrawal of energy. We are also energy beings, and we're very intuitive. So if somebody has an o a closed heart, yes, they may not say a word, but we feel and we know that. And the uh, positive side is also, exactly. if you have an open heart, people feel it even though they don't know what's going on. Exactly. You can get lots of stuff from them <laughs> when they're, they're happy to be. Uh. But here's one tip. Yes. Don't wait for other people to like you. Like them first. Well, I have to first like me. That's, the, that's what I made the mistake. Yes. I, when I sat with that group, I didn't first tune into me and feel my own love for I tried too hard to get in touch with their. Of hearts. course, so that you gave disastrous. away you gave away your power to someone else to love you. Yeah, I, I was just. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll learn that eventually. It takes a little bit of there's time an old for all of us. I think. A, <laughs> yes, there's an old Hebrew Hebrew <laughs> saying: "If I'm not for myself, who will be for me?" Mm, if only beautiful. For, if I'm only for myself, what am I for? If I don't listen to this now, when am I going to listen? But begin with yourself. All right. So I'm hearing three things. We're already extracting so much useful information. In case you <laughs> missed it, this is useful information. <laughs> Trust her in case you didn't Tip think so. Tip number one yes. is love yourself. So tell me how you do that. Well, I'm even something simple like putting my actual hand on my heart. Oh, I love that. And closing my eyes so you're not interfering <laughs> with my self-love help. <laughs> Seem selfish. I'm an obstruction right now to self-love. <laughs> no, but no, but if I close my <laughs> eyes, oh, I can feel it. It feels very nice. Mm. I hope you don't mess it up by coming into my view. Now I open my eyes. Can I be me? Can I have that feeling with my eyes open and looking at you? I think soft focus, soft focus would I'm, help. I'm going to make an angry face and I'm going to judge you desperately right now. Desperately. Desperately. That sounds very Fearlessly. romantic. <laughs> I'll judge you <laughs> fearlessly. <laughs> Would you believe this woman? Is she judging me fearlessly and desperately? I wouldn't buy the Brooklyn Bridge from her. <laughs> so as I judge you fearlessly yes. and desperately, can you love yourself and also like me while I turn on my judgment to the max? I think I need to first begin with me. Okay. Close my eyes. Oh, and then... It, and then it comes without trying. Mm. It's like the sun. The sun gives us all this gift all the time without trying. And we're made out of the same stuff. We're made out of the stardust. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, this is a scientific show. And we, were <laughs> told that. we are made out of exploding supernova, many of the minerals in our body. I love that. So I always thought I was a star. You are. You've discovered it now. 
So now so, I have more evidence for that. And then and so we naturally want to ex radiate out if we don't try too hard, like I've always done. So mm. that would be the way I would the simple technique to begin to love me and then discover then I can love you even more. Yum. <laughs> mm. I remember a few years ago <laughs> interestingly many memories <laughs> are connected to difficult life transitions. <laughs> um a number of years ago I was in a very difficult life situation and Every morning and evening, I would practice self-compassion exercise. I would do exactly what you were describing. I would put hands on my heart, sometimes in my belly too, and I oh, would. That's very nice. Yes. And I would remind myself that I'm a human being, and I'm allowed to have emotions. I'm mm. allowed to have different life experiences. I'm allowed to be in doubt sometimes. I'm allowed to not know. Mm. I am allowed to make mistakes. Wow. And I am allowed to be peculiar. To be what? Peculiar. Oh, yes. Oh, I love it. I'm going to cry. All these feelings. Mm. Thank you. That these are gifts. I hope to our audience, to, at least to me. Now and I'm thinking, um, what is it to be ourselves? Were you yourself yesterday when you came? No, I thought I was. I was trying to, which is different than being myself. Mm. If I would just, I'm learning. I mean, we're new, the, we, we're new friendship. And there's a temptation to try to be even something simple. Like when you say goodbye on the phone, and I, I, I want to say blessings, and there's some part of me that says, no, no, don't say goodbye like, like Maria said goodbye. And being myself would be to say blessings and not to be, try to be socially acceptable. And who knows? I don't know you, how you would, how you would receive that. Can I confess something? Yes. When you tell blessings to me at the end of a day, it's my favorite, one of my favorite parts of the conversation. See, I didn't know <laughs> the, you see. So I'm going to learn to, and it's, it's every moment to say, check in. Excuse me, I can say that in the conversation. I need to check in. <laughs> 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 Which we can do now on the show, really. I think we're, we're I think I'm being myself on the show. With me and and not only be myself but have feelings, which is <laughs> at the moment sad. I don't know, and I don't know why. Maybe I have better taste, <laughs> 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 and I'm sad that this self is being myself. You, can I can I share the part that is also being myself? Yes, please. So even though a lot of the experiences I've shared today they were connected through tra with transitional uh, periods of my life. What I also learn when I'm able to feel and feel one spectrum of emotions and feelings, I am so much more in, so I have so much more joy in my life. You're going to give us maybe an example if you can? I think it is daily life. It's right. when I wake up in the morning and oh, I good. look out of the window, it feels that I am ready to catch joy. Wow. I'm always ready. I'm wow. always there on the point of awareness and readiness because I know part of it is inside of me, but part of it I can also get from everywhere. And so instead of being in my mind and thinking about things, when I'm able to feel, I'm not scared to be human or as much as I'm trying not to be, uh, ex to accept myself, accept my humanness, then I'm not scared of getting angry or feeling some emotions that people may label is undesirable so when i accept my humanness then i'm not caught in the situation of if this thought is good or is it bad yep. and then i am just ready i'm always ready to see what comes my way and be excited 
like really be excited. Wow, I can see it. You're doing it now. <laughs> and, wow. and from this excitement, it takes very little. Sometimes I walk on the street and I look into people's faces and I see someone smile and it feels as if I'm catching the smile and it becomes mine. It fuels me and energizes and I feel their joy and it becomes mine and we share it. I'm beginning to feel that too. Like I'm a tree, and talking to you is like another ring around my, my, my core, and I can walk away and have that with me. I'm a bigger tree after this conversation on, on TV. So thanks for being part of my tree. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's a friend told me um, this weekend. She uh, heard a program on the radio about how trees communicate through the root system and in the past it was thought that trees are just to themselves that they are concerned about their own survival to preserve space in the forest for them to grow and look for the sun but what scientists have discovered lately is that trees actually pass um, nutrients and information to each other and so the tree that may have more access to the sun or water, it would pass through root system those nutrients to another tree. Wow. That is in need. Wow. So I feel the same thing with joy because we share so much and I don't have to only uh, draw those sources of, of joy from myself, but I can feel up like going to a gas station <laughs> from everywhere around me because if i were just my own tree it would be too difficult and unsustainable to maintain um to maintain my life so i try to use all sources that are available to me oh i'm glad to be a source <laughs> oh you're a great source <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> you're everyone's an amazing got, source <laughs> everyone's got their everyone's got their um niche in life <laughs> <sighs> I have a question for you. You told me that you have studied about love for more than 50 years. And only recently you started understanding what it means. So what is it that you have discovered? As I told you, I got one friend very angry. He had diabetes. And we've known each other for over, since 1989. He doesn't get along with most people. Very angry. With with his diabetes especially. And he asked me, would you be there for me in my illness? And I said, well, I'm a follower of nonviolent communication and I believe that we shouldn't do things out of duty but out of joy. And it might be, like the founder of Nonviolent Communication said he was driving his kids to school every morning early, and it wasn't joyful until he reached down deep inside and discovered he wanted them to get a good education, and he could find joy in doing that. And, she s and he said to me, that's not good enough. I don't want to be lying on the floor in a diabetic coma and I don't want you checking in <laughs> to see if it brings you joy or not to help me not die. <laughs> so I go to my friends and I tell them I need a new mantra. Hmm. I can't just check in. And we came up with this new mantra, which is if you need help, which is certainly true for me, for me to you, and if you would say things I don't think you would, I want you to be there for me. I would say, Maria, which is true, I would love to help you. Let's discuss or discover ways in which I can. So I'm not, I don't feel like I'm a slave to you for whatever you want. And that feels so good to me. It feels like I'm 
<laughs> flying out of myself and being, and, and that we can be a team in discovering how we can care for each other without, you know, dutifully I have to be there or you have to be there for me. So that was a new way of, of being, of loving people like you. Just that mantra. Let's discover way. Let's discover ways that I can be helpful to you when you need me. <laughs> and I remember a few days ago when you told me, you said, "I really feel that I love you, and it doesn't matter what you do. I feel I love you." Yes, that's somewhat new. Or to maybe me. in that. It's safer because it's a, a spiritual romance. Thank <laughs> God. It's a spiritual romance. Thank <laughs> God we're 40 <laughs> years different in our age. Thank, blessed be, so I can love someone in a... It, it might be harder if I was 42 yeah. and met you. That might be too scary. This but, is a little less scary. But you know what? Scary. I'll tell you the, the, my part of the story. My, yeah. my part of the story is that I thought to myself, um, how did I deserve this? <laughs> you said that to me. I did say this. And How I did I deserve and this? I'm not sure I like my answer. I said we both deserve each other. Yes. I don't know if that's it sounded it sounds too um macho to mm. say yes we both deserve you know, too as sure of myself. You know, um one of my wonderful teachers whom I respect so much, he he uh told me and those words are always in my mind. And he said that he's a continuous student of love, that it is very easy to love um, idealizing people or situations or even the planet in which we live. But just love things for what they are and seeing all the sides. Uh, and it's easy to love when people are nice, but when people are rude or angry, how, how is it that we maintain that love within our hearts when it's not easy to love people, some people. Yes, I I like the um, I learned in Israel: serve God with the evil impulse, <laughs> or kill with kindness. Sometimes I <laughs> I love <laughs> yes it as an attack. Oh, you're treating me so badly. I love you. Take that. <laughs> you know Take what? That. You know what I learned is that n it's never personal. That people are never personally mean to us and i think this is what i have discovered by doing the healing work with my clients yes. and it's mostly that every time we put the um, shield of protection around ourselves it's mostly because we are a little bit scared of being seen and and love many people are very scared of love because i think um just in the way we grew up um evolutionary when even from our childhood love is frequently conditional it's based on our actions based on how we behave and how we present ourselves in a given situation so there are expectations and i think because of that of course judgment appears and <laughs> for me it's the process the same way we talked about being able to feel as a child. The child doesn't know that love is conditional. The child loves unconditionally. Oh, yes? Is that yes? Of course. Doesn't get angry? Isn't <laughs> well, but angry doesn't mean that it's not loved. So love doesn't look like smiling all the time because you can be angry and still love at the same time. It doesn't look like a smile. You don't... Because you can absolutely be in a very... Uh, engage discussion or anger uh, fight with someone it doesn't mean that you don't love and I think there is a lot of confusion around that because it doesn't mean pleasing everyone you just gave an example of your friend that you felt that okay I'm going to only I'm able right now to do only this but I'm not able to maybe do everything you're asking me for yes and this is what I'm able to give you. And so it, what feels to me right, it's 
<laughs> those boundaries and and you also spoke about being connected to yourself and know, knowing what is true for yourself in a given moment so i think those two elements of being true to yourself being present and we started with the breath the show that connecting to yourself and knowing what is true then you're able to love authentically yum speaking of energy healing uh, if people want more information about what you do you have a website yes i do have a website which is my website is my first and my last name and <laughs> i have to tell you something i have two y's one is in my first name and y is in my last name Could you so spell your website yes, for us? yes. m a r i y a s h i y k o dot love that love that love how'd you get that <laughs> It was special. <laughs> yeah, you have to it pay. It, it was you a paid gift from a special did, person. Did you pay extra to get that love? I did. Oh wow! But but it was a, a beautiful gift from a friend who chose it for me. How much does it cost to get that love? Um, it n not that much to be no, honest. Oh no, my. <laughs> boy, you're special. <laughs> I don't know any other that love people. Oh. Not, not many that love people. <laughs> I love it. It grew on me, but I love it now. So, so we, you had three intentions for the show. Have yes. we covered it? The, what, what? the first intention, our first intention was to feel. Yes, which we've done. You've which we've us. done. You've taught us very well, taught me very well. The second intention was to love. To explore what it means. To explore what it means to love. Yep. I feel we haven't fully finished that. No, we have a few more minutes to fully <laughs> discuss what it means to um and the second one the i want to one, and this i'm sorry and the third one is to be yourself we and we've explored a bit yes. of those so you think you'd like to explore more the concept of love and i want to connect it to creativity and you did love this lovely man who is a distant friend of mine and that was the the, the strongest love of your life that is true and want to say w what's involved are there special times when you loved him that you can think of oh my because it was new to you yes absolutely so how did what did it what was it like could you think has any particular moment come to mind when you were loving this man and and say oh my i love this man um i think it's it's a perfect combination of love and creativity. I think when we were ab when we were authentic together, when we were completely open and vulnerable and sharing our fears. Do you remember a particular time and place where this was happening? Mm. Yes. You, you, would you like to share it? Yes. It's very vulnerable, <laughs> but it's a beautiful... Well, this is Somerville. They can handle okay, it. This um, is, these are the Somerville people. They can handle vulnerability. <laughs> and I will put hands on my heart uh, just because it feels so vulnerable. Wow. It's actually uh, the last, almost the last moment that I do remember, and I can feel tears in my eyes right now. And when when both of us were just so open to each other at the very end and and i said wow this hurts so much can you take this pain away <laughs> and um he's a beautiful conscious person and when he uh initially started um when we're in pain we tend to blame or reject and with all the consciousness that he is, it, there was a tiny, tiny taint of that. And then he said, honey, I'm really sorry for doing this to you. I don't want you to feel distant from me. I, want, I don't want to close my heart to you. I want to keep my heart open. Mm. And I think... <sighs> In that moment, when 
both of us spoke of our of um our truths and <laughs> wow i feel tears right now which is beautiful I feel really I beautiful feel, i feel them too <laughs> which and is they really they beautiful. Feel beautiful and touch and sad too about all of the above um but i think this moment it was this moment of uh pain and joy together because i could see how even in the moment of great pain you can still love and you can still keep your heart open and this is new to you that is completely new to me My. i even for that it was worth the experience even for that um because i have never experienced even the transition in such a beautiful way My. um how do you keep your heart open even in pain mm. Maybe it's time for you to sing another song. <laughs> I think, think so too. <laughs> I think it's time. <laughs> <laughs> well, two come to mind. Okay. Uh, the very first one, perhaps, which I think you've heard me sing, if you ever need a friend, or <laughs> how bad can you be, how bad can I be if you love me? Mm. Is there anyone, any particular one you'd like to sing? The second one to start with, maybe? Uh, let's see if I can find it. We have an index now, thanks to my index of first lines. Gee. June 30th. It's close. June 30th. Yes. Oh yes, this is a wonderful book. I instead of the page numbers, there are dates. Mm -hmm. It's June thirtieth. I have it if you want it. This one? You have it. Uh yes. Um it's called Bad Love. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you know the tune I think, oh, yes. Uh I think I'm just making up the tune. Oh you make oh make it up. I, 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 I can maybe sing it my way after okay. you sing it. Your Do you way. want to start it and then I'll tune in? Oh um, well this is how I sing it. Okay. Oh bad love. How bad can I be if you love me? How bad can I be if you care? How, How bad, bad can, can I be, be if, if you love me? And it feels like I'm walking, walking on, on air. air. I've lost, lost all my friends and my family. I've lost all my money and home. But how bad can I be if you love me? Even if I'm all alone. How bad can you be if I love you? And how bad can you be if I care? How bad can you be if I love you? And, and it we feel like, like we're well walking on, on air. air. Thank you for singing my poem song with me. We're feeling so much. Oh, we are. In yes. this I'm learning show, it, it we're doesn't, feeling doesn't, And they don't have to be so happy. I'm much. learning they don't have to be happy feelings. It's so nice. They can be so nice to... My 
cousin told her children. And I'm going to choose a second. Okay. Oh, this is the one I want to sing. Serious laughter. Let's be serious while silly. So we're seriously silly. <laughs> and silly being serious. So we're seriously serious. <laughs> Thank you for laughing. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Hmm. My cousin told her children, my cousin Judy, I'll always love you. Like has to be earned. I'll always love you. Like has to be earned. So mm. I don't always have to like you. I don't always have to like you. That's so freeing. And for you to know that you'll always be loved. But I might not like you. I'll take that with me. Yep. Um, and I, you know, the quote from uh, one of my um, teachers that I admire very much. She says, love everybody and remember that you don't have to take everyone home with you. <laughs> that would be um, a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> so and, I th and I think what she meant by that is that it's the we don't have to yell out about our love but it's the energy inside it's the I think children love everybody they have this presumption that everybody's good you had a different childhood than I had. <laughs> I didn't like anybody. Unless you yeah. prove otherwise. Or love anybody. <laughs> no, no. Uh, maybe my father, but he left us to go to the war. Mm. So that was hard. And so I take her words, um, I take her words as come with this almost naive and childlike sense of naive not necessarily trusting that everyone is good but mostly um being a mirror of potentiality for people to be good because some i think the biggest the biggest um gift that many of us have is to show people their potential and i believe that every person has a potential to be good and sometimes they need a reminder and an opportunity to show that mm -hmm. and so when we enable without judgment to just for another person to express their best side then they step up they may not step up the first time but maybe after second time or they're tentative sometimes they're afraid to step up and see the beautiful side of, the, of themselves. themselves. Can you think of, this is a hard question, you might not an, be able to answer on the spot. Can you think of a time where you, that happened either to you or to someone you, that someone you helped see their better side? I'm discovering that with my roommate. Oh, wonderful. He's I'm sure I do have as well as you tell your story. I'll oh, you do? No, no, you, okay. you go ahead. No, I'd rather, okay. I thought I was just going to give you time. If you have okay. one, tell me right now. Um, I'm thinking about my father. Mm. And I'm thinking... Back in Russia. He's, he's back in Russia, yes. Yeah. And uh, when I think about him, I decided a few years that I will, a few years ago, that I will simply love him. And we have some challenges uh you know a little bit more uh, about my story i'm not going to go into details but there there have been many challenges and something shifted um a few years ago when i decided to simply love him wow and can you do that with your heart just decide um heart <laughs> hey got new command Yes. Love that man, that very I difficult man. <laughs> now, do can you? Does it work? That works. You know what? I realized that it's a choice. That love is a choice. Wow. The same way as forgiveness is a choice. Nobody needs to ask us to forgive them. Yes. We can choose to forgive. We can choose how we feel, and we can choose to love as well. We can choose to love someone. Even we can we choose to love. Yes. Just like that. 
I would not lie if I say if it's just like that. Yep. Um, it took me some time. Oh. But eventually, it was a decision. Eventually, I said, I'm deciding to love just the way he is. You see, I did that with my mother, and I was guilty of spiritual bypass because there were many other feelings mm. underneath my choice to be a good boy and love her that didn't come out till after she died. So I chose to love, but wasn't, as you said, really true to myself. Mm. It, it was, well, that was the way I did it. I'm, maybe I'm glad I did it that way. First, choose the love, and then discover, oh my, there's so much pain and hurt and anger. I need to, exp now that you're gone, I can express it mm. and get it out. I imagine it takes time for many people, and um, I agree with you about the spiritual bypass and just simply deciding superficially with the mind. Yeah. I think the decision that I made was a decision with the heart. Oh, yes, you see, you're, you're, you're right, you're... You're a better human being than I am. <laughs> I are. don't think about that. You are. That's okay. I'm, I'm honored to be with the better. You know. You know I'm learning. I am learning. Well, this is. I think I'm learning so much from you as I'm well. Learning so very we're much, learning yeah. mutually. But I do want to s talk. Um, I think we don't have much time, but I want to say one thing about creativity. When we open our hearts to love, I feel when I open my heart to love, we're also enabling ourselves to be more creative. And there are, how, tell me how much time we have. Um, and I would love to share two ways in which we can be creative. I think I need a word that, that figures. You can tell us. Okay. How, how, how much time? One um, more minute. Thank so you. So the first one, um, the first one, uh, creativity lays in the mind. Ability to change our mind and the point of view is the, f the most powerful way in which we can be creative. And the second one, of course, is art, a more traditional concept of creativity, and I feel both of those can be a topic for each own show, which may be a seed I'm planting. For that, <laughs> yes, we'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> to just entice a little bit. Whether you love us or not, <laughs> we're coming back. <laughs> the creative spark. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I want to finish with gratitude. Well, I'm grateful that you did the show with me. I'm grateful for your friends who are watching from far, far away and for the people from Somerville and these two wonderful men who are putting us on camera and Charlie Tesh and Joyce in the control room. Thank you all for joining us. And maybe Maria will sing something for us as, we, as the show ends. How bad, oh, how can anybody ever tell you? Oh, sure. Maybe I make up a song. Okay. Um, no, I just, I, I want to say in a song, <laughs> I want to say in a song, I am grateful for being alive. Oh, good night. Okay. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. I hope you had remotely as good a time as we did. We did have. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You've helped us. Thank you. <laughs> wow.